it's really early. I'm just heading into the wholesaler. I was just in the shed having a check of what what came home last night. I'm gonna try to figure this out. What I need to buy <clears throat> because we've got to get enough for today, Thursday. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I've got a funeral for sat for Saturday and um, orders for Tuesday and I'll be back at the wholesaler Tuesday morning so oh, this is the tricky part figuring out because we have no idea what will sell roadside and this is the oh, where did I put my keys in my pocket okay, that makes sense this is the first weekend of school holidays and school holidays the sales are usually lower it smells like poo in this car something's not right <sighs> this is what happens when a bucket gets spilt and nobody tells me and it gets in the carpets that's what it smells like yep that was a bucket so now we've got a water spill in the boot of the car. We really need to get a flower van. I just wish we could get one. The little one that we got, um, Moreno hates it. So we're just going to sell it because he won't drive it. So may as well just get rid of it. Oh, I hate using the family car for the flowers. I really hate it. But right now, especially with sales, we're not sure what's happening. Um, we can't exactly go and buy a car, so that sucks. I've got everything inside. I've spent about $200 or $230, I think. On flowers this morning so that'll get us through until Tuesday morning to get roadside and some orders done and I also hope I've just got enough left over in case someone rings at the last minute with an order which sometimes happens which is good I'll show you what I picked up I've got three bunches of chamomile and it smells amazing I've got three different types of chrysanthemum I've got two pink chrysanthemum and this buds. I just bought the same colours. They were the ones that sort of looked the freshest. Remember I've told you when you go to the wholesaler, if you want to hang it upside down and give it a little shake, make sure none of those heads have snapped off. And you want to check the, oh sorry, you want to check that the stems don't look too old or that the leaves don't look too old. Uh, Christie's are pretty good. You just want to, sometimes, especially these ones, they, if they're all really open, they might be a bit old. Otherwise, Christie's will last weeks. Chamomile lasts a long time, but you don't want to leave it in that plastic. It'll sweat a little bit and it can make the leaves mushy. So you want to get it out. Oh, you can't really tell now. I'll show you anyway. You want to have it all just getting air around it. Same with the dispuds. I take the papers off and let them air. I let most things air. The only things I'll kind of leave in the paper because they're a bit delicate. I mean, in the... Um, Cellophane, because they're a bit delicate, is uh, gerberas. Um, I think that's the only thing I leave. So what else have I got? Get back to this. Um, I got some zianthus. It was really pretty. I got four bundles of tryptamine, because I love it. It's the prettiest thing. I got three different types, oh, not three different types, three stock, and it smells amazing. I got another little bunch of ornamental kale i liked it because it's that it's wider it's going to show up better but they're very small like look i would have paid the same price like that would have been about 20 bucks for those then i got another pink gerber because i'm using that for the funeral order what i'll do is i'll film myself um, just prepping all these flowers and what I do I just prep them put them in buckets over here <clears throat> and then I've got to make some more bouquets to go roadside tonight I won't do the funeral order until tomorrow and then I've got to clean this whole space up 
Hi everyone, thought I'd just voice over this because the whole process of prepping the flowers took 45 minutes so I'm just going to speed a heap up. So we've got the chamomile and I trim the ends off just so it can suck up the water and I just take off those lower leaves. Um, I pull more leaves off later on, I, I kind of separate branches and use it in bouquets. With the disbuds, I just take them out of the plastic and take the paper wrap off them. I have found they can rot a little bit if you leave that paper on there. So this just lets them breathe. I've got Lysianthus. I just slowed this down because it was just so fast if I left it. So as with everything, take the rubber bands off so it's really easy to pull them out of buckets. I trim the ends of everything. Now with the Lysianthus, I didn't take any leaves off. They're really quick and easy to take leaves off as you're making a bouquet. Um, and I've left them in that plastic. It just protects them a little bit. Kale's an easy one. Trim the ends, pop them in a bucket. I do pull some leaves off the kale as I'm making a bouquet. Keep the area clean. That's how I don't end up with a disastrous mess. So I'm working on Chrissy's now. They're really easy to stick, uh, strip their stems, trim the ends off, take them out of their plastic. I don't know what I was showing you there, but... And then I, as I'm doing them, I pop them in the bucket. This bunch, the white one, had heaps of, you know, wrecked heads, so I had to snip them out as well. So I'm just kind of making each stem look as good as it possibly can before I pop it in the bucket of water to store it. I'm going to work on gerberas, another really easy one to prep before you make your bouquets. Just take the elastic off, trim the ends, and then I will put it straight in the bucket just like this. And you'll see me do that with the ones, I don't know how long ago these were, I think they were just like probably, I don't know, a couple of days ago I bought those. But I will re-trim those stems before I put them in the fresh water, just to always allow the flowers to keep uptaking water. Uh, these two, their heads went floppy, so I'm going to snip them off and keep it. I, I had plans to do a flat lay picture, but I never ended up doing it. But anyway, I just couldn't throw them out, <laughs> so I kept it. Um, I'm always dumping water out the door. The stock, I just take off the leaves to about halfway and trim the ends off. These ones I've just ripped straight out of the ground <laughs> to get the extra length. So I just kind of tidy that up and pop them in the bucket. I'll take extra leaves off when I'm making a bouquet if I need to. Now this is the one that just takes so so long thryptamine. It's just like a bush, it grows like a bush and they sell it by weight not by stem so it is a mess. And of this video, so it took me 45 minutes to prep all these flowers. Um, it was a whole 20 minutes just to do the thryptamine and I did have four bunches of it so you know I had a lot of it. But sometimes when there's not a lot of other cute filler flower at the wholesaler, I will just stock up on thryptamine. I really love it. And you can only get it in the cold months too, so I kind of make the most of it. And you can see me doing a couple of piles. I've got the one that I just popped in the bucket, but I've got a little tiny pile there near my snips. I keep that for my daughter. She makes little, um, little tiny little posies and she sells them for $5 each. She uses those in her posies, so of course I prep it for her <laughs> and I, then I just put it in a separate bucket. Sometimes when I'm doing thryptamine or flowers like this that are all sort of different sizes, I might put them in different buckets according to their height and then I know as I'm making something I'm kind of pulling from the bucket that I want that height. Um, I don't think I've bothered to do that this, this day though. I'm almost finished the thryptamine. Tipping more water out. Now we need to do a clean up. And this is those little short ones that I keep for my daughter. I'm just picking them up so all the stems are at the same length. So I know they're going to end up in the water. I leave that last bunch of thryptamine. Because um, I'm going to use that to make bouquets. And I just, there's no point in me putting it in the bucket. It's hard to pull out of the bucket. So now I'm going to make some bunches. Uh, with the... Um, what's it called again? Ah, oh, Lysianthus. Sometimes the heads are a bit squashed, so I just kind of um, press them between my finger to just plump them up again. 
I'm talking to Moreno here, I'm trying to figure out what went on with something out in the in the flower field. So I'm just kind of pulling out what I need to make the bouquet, calculate it in my head. If you want to watch bouquet making in more detail, I've got other videos on my channel for that. And you can go over there and I explain things. I've also got shorts on my Instagram. I might pop some up on YouTube too, I'm not sure. I've got one up. So just making another bunch. I think I've got a ornamental kale, Chrissy, thryptamine, and a piece of stock in that one. Oh no, oh, and some chamomile. And it smelled amazing. I love chamomile. We're gonna grow so much of it this season. So I'm gonna do a disbud one now. See how that, that was really fast, but with the chamomile, I pull side branches off and I use it in different parts of the bouquet. I just don't like how it all sticks together in a tight little bundle if I use the one big stem. Don't forget, always put your marketing material on your bouquets. Okay, here we go again. So I, this is just how I work. I will just continue to make bouquets. And I know some florists will just lay all the flowers out on their bench and make up the bouquets and then put whatever's left over in the water. There's a million different ways to skin a cat. So you just do, I probably shouldn't say that. It's probably not good for the vegetarians and anyway, I don't mean we're skinning cats, but that's just a saying that we say in Australia. There is a lot of ways to do things and that doesn't mean that one way is better than the other. You just need to figure it out for yourself what works best. Doing a native bouquet now, it's got some banks here and they have a tendency to grow very crooked. So you just got to work with it and it is a bit of a kind of textural element when they go sideways like that. And to wrap that one in paper, I'd really like to get away from the plastic wrap. We just can't do it roadside. We can't use the papers roadside. They get really messed up. So there you go. I'm putting that leftover thry thryptamine in a bucket and then I just tidy things up a bit. I wasn't going to use all my flowers today. And that is how I prepare the flowers and then put together some bouquets. This is what I've got left to do the funeral and I've got to get more foliage, but we'll do the funeral and the, um, do Friday and Saturday. This is what we've got to take out tonight. The ones that aren't in the buckets, I just haven't got water in the buckets. So I've got them like that. So I remember and don't send them out without water. Story. Hi everyone. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry that just oh. ended so abruptly. I don't know what happened to the footage. Normally I can fix it and make it still work if I've lost a clip, but I just couldn't with that one. It just kind of ended and there was nothing else to remotely related to work with. So here we are. Uh, yeah, so you saw at the start of the video, you know, things are a bit depressing at the moment. Um, it is a bit tough. And I want to be honest with you, I, like I don't want to film this and make it look like flower farming is all glorified. I'm sitting on a walking track and I'm conscious that if people come along they're going to see me talking to a camera. Um, I'm not that experienced with this yet. So, so as I was saying, I want to be honest about how things are going but also at the same time reserve some privacy for us as well. So. It's not all, like in Australia, it's not all beer and Skittles flower farming. Like there's so many hard things about it and there is ups and downs. And at the moment, I think just with this, all the uncertain, uncertainty with the economic climate, it is just really tough. And we kind of feel like we need to scramble a little bit and like, what's the word? Not rejig pivot our business a little bit to make this work for now um, but in the meantime we're going to lose a few week, few weeks wage don't throw that rock on me no 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 give that to mummy if you throw that at me i'll take you home <gasps> parenting 101 you can't let your kid play hey you can't let your kid throw rocks <clears throat> so as I was saying, 
we have to pivot the business and make it work another way. Roadside isn't working at the moment. I, I think, oh, we don't know. We don't know why. Um, and I'm not sure what's going on for other florists because nobody will talk about it. Um, everybody wants to make it just look like they're doing great and business as usual. The thing that they probably have that's really helping them is bookings for things like funerals and like events and stuff, which I do need to get into. I think I've just been so flat out and we've been in this whirlwind of setting up a business that it was just another thing that I just couldn't sort of cope with at that point, but I need to. So <clears throat> I will work on that, work on that a little bit more. Um, yeah, so we hope we can get through this. I'll keep, obviously I'll keep doing this channel. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. We have no intentions of quitting. Like, it's not like we're going to stop flower farming. We're going to keep doing it. But yeah, I don't know what's going to happen with business. Things are just really crappy at the moment um, for business. Really bad. And we know it's not just us. We have other friends in business that have said the same. Um, even one of the guys that sells roadside near us, he sells a different product. Um, and his has just gone cold as well. Like, So they're... We're tr all trying not to panic, but at the same time, this is our livelihood. What are we going to do? <laughs> so anyway, um, that's where we're at. That's why the opening scene of today's video was like a bit of depression because <laughs> it is it is actually really rough. So anyway, you know, you can come here and get the real story of what's going on. Anyway, see you next week. Bye.